What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to kind of be giving you some tips for getting better at Dragon Ball Fighters. Now, this video isn't necessarily for people who are brand new to the game and are still just figuring things out. I've got some other videos for that that I'm going to link down in the description. But today's video is for if you've been playing for a little while and you're feeling like you're kind of stuck, like you've hit a plateau. I've collected five things that I think separate the really good Dragon Ball Fighters players from the just okay Dragon Ball Fighters players. So if you've been at the same rank for a while and you really want to get to the next level, stick around and pay attention to these five things, guys. I think it'll help out a lot. Alright, so the first thing that I think separates really good Dragon Ball Fighters players from just okay players is hit confirming off of down heavy. So basically, I feel like players who are like pretty decent but not that good, every time they do a down heavy, they go into super dash, whether it hits or whether it's blocked. So you can do a long string, end in down heavy, and then super dash. And of course, the problem with this is that a good player is just going to down heavy you out of the super dash every single time. So I think it's a habit that you really want to break as soon as you can if you want to not get punished by better players. So what you can do is actually hit confirm whether the down heavy hits and then if it doesn't hit you can go into something that'll beat them doing a down heavy. So you know like a slightly delayed special move or something like that works perfectly for beating people who expect you to super dash and they go for down heavy. So this isn't too hard to do, but you can even option select it to make it easier. If you press down heavy, heavy, you'll get a super dash if it hits. But you won't get anything if it's blocked. So you do down heavy, heavy, and then your special move. And then you'll see if the down heavy actually connects, you won't get your special move. It just won't come out because it'll get eaten by that super dash input. So start doing this, and I think you'll find you get a lot of free hits because people are very used to the habit of pressing down heavy when they block it down heavy, and you can really punish that tendency and get a lot of free combos this way. The next thing that I think really separates good players from mediocre players is mixing up their wake-ups. So I think most sort of decent players, they tend to get up upwards into the air every single time. So they hold up and a button, and they get up into the air. And the problem with that is it's predictable. The enemy knows they're going to do it. And they're going to time their wake up pressure to sort of deal with this option. There's a lot of other stuff you can do uh, that will really help you out. So you can do stuff like getting up neutral. And then going for a down heavy to punish them for trying to meet you in the air. Or just delaying your wake up can be really effective as well. But the most important thing is that you just don't do the same thing every time. You mix up what you're doing and you keep the enemy guessing. And this is something that I see that I think leads to losses for otherwise pretty good players. But the problem is they wake up the same way every time. They get figured out so fast and they start losing because of it. So make this change and I think it'll make a big difference. Next up, I want to talk about covering your landing. So you end up in the air a lot in this game. Obviously, you have a lot of air options. Uh, but what happens to a lot of new players is when they're coming down, they're coming in for a landing, uh, they just get down heavy by the opponent because all they want to do is press buttons on the way down. But there's a lot of good ways to cover your landing in this game, and I want to talk about a few of them. The first one is a delayed super dash. So you can see if the opponent is trying to down heavy you, you can do a delayed super dash to change your landing timing and punish them for doing a down heavy too early. Next thing you can do is vanish. Like that. There you go. You end up behind them. You make their down heavy whiff. And sure, you use the meter, but if it causes you to get out of a bad situation, it can be worth it a lot of the times. The next thing you can do is call an assist. And this works so well. People are not expecting you to be able to hit them when you're this high up in the air. So using the assist to hold the opponent still and give yourself a chance to land, even if they block it, you get some offense started. Very powerful tool. So all these things, you know, combined with some sort of character specific stuff you might have as well, these can really help you out and make you a lot safer so that you don't just get hit by that down heavy every time you're trying to come down with a button. So make sure you do that as well, guys. Next up, another thing that I think really separates good players is that they block 6M. I know this sounds obvious that, yeah, good players are going to block better than bad players. But blocking 6M is something that I think immediately when I see the opponent uh, consistently block this overhead, I know that I'm going to be in for a difficult match. 
Against less godlike players, 6M plus assist is like a really easy way to get hits. But against good players, they just never get hit by it. Even online, I know it can be hard to block stuff with the input delay. But the good players are so trained in blocking this that even online, they won't get hit. So the best way to practice this is using training dummy recording settings. You can go in, record on slot 1, make that just like him doing 6M. Go in, make slot 2 something like down light 6M. Slot 3, we can just make it 2 down lights. Make sure you set it to repeat randomly on the playback method. And then just practice sitting there and trying to block the 6Ms. It's a little bit tricky, but, you know, a little bit of practice and you'll get really consistent at it. And then you can even turn on the input delay in training mode. Make it even harder for yourself. So get used to blocking this and you'll just be way harder to open up. And you will win a lot more matches because the opponent is not going to be able to get free mix-ups on you by just doing 6M. And then the fifth and final thing I want to talk about here is using your sparking to get kills. I feel like at lower to middle ranks, what people tend to do with sparking is they always save it for their third character and they try to make a comeback. And this can work at the lower ranks, but the better the opponent that you're fighting, the less likely you're going to be able to be to make this comeback because it's going to be hard to open them up with a character with no assists, even if they have level 3 sparking. So when you start fighting good players, you'll notice that they spark early and they use it to kill off their opponent's first character. The first character is worth like 50% of the value of their team because once a team only has two characters, their assist options are a lot more limited and it's going to be harder for them to switch out and regain their red life. So I recommend going into training and working out some sparking combos so you know exactly how much damage you have available to you when you have sparking available. So you can use that to get kills on the opponent's characters and reduce the overall effectiveness of their team. And another aspect of this is using your own sparking to cancel out the opponent's life gain from their sparking. So say in a situation like this, if you don't use sparking, you're never going to be able to get this kill because you see she's just recovering life faster than you can do damage. So you see I wasn't able to kill her there. But this time if we do it again, and this time I'm going to activate sparking when I get this hit, we're actually going to be able to kill her. So you can see I'm chewing away a great deal of her blue life with these hits here. And now this super is actually going to kill. There you go. So by using sparking, you can close out matches that otherwise you wouldn't be able to, especially when the opponent isn't sparking, recovering health. It can be a huge game changer and get you those character kills that you otherwise wouldn't think are possible. And so guys, that's going to be it for the video. I hope you found this entertaining and informative. Make sure to let me know what you think down in the comments. Did you guys know all of these already? How are you feeling about where you are in fighters right now? Are you trying to get to that next level? If so, hopefully this helped you out. So that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.